Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe. The government of Zambia has dismissed as malicious propaganda information that's making the rounds on social media. It's alleged that the state will shut down the internet from Thursday to Sunday. Uh, Zambia goes to the polls on Thursday. In a statement, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Services, Amos Malupenga, said that the information was false and calculated to cause alarm amongst Zambians. Meanwhile, Zambia's president, Edgar Lungu, ordered the deployment of the military to suppress electoral violence ahead of the general elections on Thursday. Lungu says that he has allowed the army, the air force and the national service to help police to deal with the security situation. There have been incidents of violence by ruling party opposition supporters across the country in the run-up to these polls. The Zambian president will be facing 15 other challenges in this week's polls. Whilst many believe that it's a two-horse race between President Lungu of the Patriotic Front and Hakainde Hichilema of the United Party for National Development, a UPND, another candidate, though, believes that his party has a real chance of winning. Bishop Trevor Mwamba, the new president of the party once led by Kenneth Kaunda, the United National Independence Party, or UNIP, says that theirs is the right party for this time in the country's history. I spoke to him a little earlier about his vision for the country. Bishop Trevor Mwamba, the UNIP presidential candidate for this year's elections in Zambia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Peter, and thank you for having me. You've assumed the leadership of the party this year. And uh, in politics in Africa, sometimes the personality of someone such as uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda can be so overarching that people start to look at the party in terms of that personality. And I just wonder if you've been able to separate UNIP from Dr. Kenneth Kaunda in the sense that it's a party, not something about an individual? Well, yes and no. I think there is a sense in which we should celebrate great leaders. And it's so good to, if the parties identify or the countries identify with a certain leader, it's what they stand for that is important. And so in the case of President Kaunda, of course, uh, Peter, rightly, he was a colossal a statesman on the international political world stage, uh, not only in Zambia as a president of UNIP, but in Africa as a pan-Africanist, and uh, uh, further on the international world stage uh, uh, with the Commonwealth, with the non-aligned movement of countries, with the African Union. But it's the values that he stood for, uh, values which were there to help others and bring about liberation, values which put humankind at the center. And so those values are important for all of us to emulate and to follow, values of helping one another. So in that context, we, when we do celebrate such great giants, as in the case of South Africa, uh, President Mandela, Madiba, what he stood for, we can not say, therefore, this is the man, and therefore, and the party and uh, how he influences, they, they go together, they, they, they define a nation, they define a party. And in that context, I would emulate those footsteps because uh, that's what I believe in myself. And so we're inspired by that. Uh, but we must be careful not to worship, uh, turn them into idols, because they will be the first one to admit that uh, they're human and they were flawed and, and so forth. I loved uh, President Mandela's uh, description once of defining a saint, and they say something to the effect that uh, a saint um, is a sinner, who keeps on trying something like that. There. And so, yes, we want to build on that footsteps and we are honored, uh, especially as unique, to have had such a great statesman and I'm following in those footsteps, building on those footsteps and inspired by those footsteps. All right, so in winning the uh, um, leadership of your party, it was a pretty tight race and uh, you managed to overcome uh, by beating uh, Dr. Kaunda's son. Because it was such a close race, is the party now divided or have the troops all rallied behind you? 
Oh, not at all. No, the party is not divided at all. Yes, in the troops are all uh, rallied behind me. And in fact, it, it, although the contest, yes, was tight, nevertheless, uh, my predecessor, Tulenje Kaunda, afterwards uh, uh, graciously ac accepted defeat. And he's in support of all that we are doing. And uh, But that proves the democracy within the party itself, that uh, this uh, son of our founding president, uh, you know, uh, uh, could be defeated and accept defeat. And uh, we're working together. No, uh, UNIP is one. There are no factions at all. We're looking forward to helping and building Zambia. How do you rate your chances? I mean, the uh, results in previous elections have not looked kindly towards UNIP. And a lot of people are saying that this race is about uh, Edgar Lungu and uh, Mr. Hichilema. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, indeed. No, no, no. The chances are very high, extremely high. Um, the point is that in the past, you see, UNIP for the past 20 years, uh, and uh, I'll be the first to admit, has been very dormant. But there's a history to all that. And uh, so it, it didn't participate very much. It's about leadership again and uh, the type of leadership that was then at the helm. That has changed with my coming. And because of that, is it, UNIP is this founding party. It's the mother party of the nation. It's the liberation party. Well known. The structures are in every place. But because it played a dominant role, uh, the parties like PF, the UPND, these are all what I call uh, sons and daughters of, of UNIP. And so they have moved to the center stage. And that is all that was there on the political landscape for Zambians to choose. But with UNIP coming in, an alternative has been established. And we, we, we hold uh, the, 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 the history of this country. All those leaders of these uh, uh, parties were all educated by UNIP. They are all beneficiaries of the development of UNIP. So it commands that respect and that sense of uh, reverence. And so people now have an alternative and uh, they are excited about that. So it's no longer about UPND, PF. Now UNIP is there to provide the alternative. In fact, recent uh, uh, survey indicates that 50% of the Zambians are not interested in PF or UPND. So in comes UNIP. And uh, the chances of us winning are extremely high. And given, and may he so rest in peace, the demise of President Kaunda, we were reminded of the greatness of uh, the leadership that he, as president of UNIP, provided and what UNIP did. And so people are now looking back uh, with nostalgia at what was then the golden days, really, and moving to the future. And that's why I stand in. We're going to build on that. And so, and we're a proven uh, party that has developed the country, run government, and we want to do it again. So it is open, and the probability of UNIP winning are extremely high. What do you think this election is about for Zambian people? When they go to the polls and put their X next to a face, next to a party, what are they hoping for? You see, Zambians have been starved for, for, for a long time now uh, in, in the context of the right leadership. It's a prosperous country, and yet we are poor. It shouldn't be. I mean, among our great resources is copper. And copper is its highest at the moment, and we're still languishing with public debts and things like that. It shouldn't be happening. So Zambians have this, they are peaceful, loving people. They just want to live simple lives, but they have been betrayed by the wrong leadership. And that is my take. It's about bad leadership. And this election really is very crucial. It's about choosing values that build a nation, that build a people. And those values were encapsulated in the philosophy of humanism under UNIP. One Zambia, one nation, this unity. We have now this division, tribal divisions, people playing on ethnic groups, uh, you know, to try to win power. We've had violence uh, taking place. Uh, this is not Zambian. And we've had the military for the first time deployed. This never happened. So this election is crucial. It's about getting back to the values that make us who we are. So for me, it's about morality, the right 
principles of leadership and leaders being there for their people and the people being at the center of our political, economic and social development, that it benefits them. So it's a choice really between the values that build us up and the values that destroy. And that's what we stand on, the values that build us up. And that's what humanism or Ubuntu is about. So it's a choice between but but how do you how do you regenerate this uh, moral uh, view this moral high ground? Um, people are people; they are who they are. Um, you occupying an office? How do you change that? I mean, are you going to bring that color to office? Absolutely. You see, it's about teaching people. Uh, President Kaunda would tell us many times. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your, your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you like them to do unto you. We need to be taught this. This is what defines us as human beings. And in fact, you see, morality is very important in any field, whether it's in politics, whether it's in business. And I'm reminded of something that Edmund Burke once said, that liberty cannot exist in the absence of morality. And we could say that democracy cannot exist in the absence of morality. Development cannot exist in the absence of morality. So morality becomes this very important uh, compass. And when we talk about morality, we're not talking just you know, simply about uh, praying and getting on your knees, that's important. But talking about doing the right thing for the betterment of others, for the, for the betterment of yourself, that which ennobles us, that is, makes us better people, we need to be taught. We need to live uh, in a world, whether as a nation or whether in, on the international stage, where we respect each other, where we love each other, where we work for the good and development of everybody. That is the morality that needs to be brought back in politics, and that is what I believe this election is about, and I believe that you need and I, as president of UNIP, will offer that to the Zambian people. We are all encompassing. We are all God's children. We need to work together for the betterment of our lives and our country. And in fact, our region and uh, Africa as a whole. We need that type of leadership. You may have given us a clue in terms of uh, my next question, but uh, a number of parties have been complaining about restrictions, even intimidation by uh, the authorities uh, through the police uh, and institutions like that. Uh, is that something that you've uh, witnessed and something that you're experiencing? Do you get a sense that the democratic space has been shrinking a little bit? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now, in terms of experience, in the terms of I personally, or UNIP. UNIP is in a very different space in contrast to the other parties. As I mentioned, UNIP is the mother party of this country. Everybody identifies with UNIP. Our founding fathers and mothers and uh, our grandparents, and uh, it, it is the identity of Zambia. So there's a strange way, especially with President Kaunda's demise, may he so rest in peace, the great respect that he commanded. So. In terms of our campaign as UNIP, and I as an individual, I speak personally, uh, I haven't experienced that. However, I should underline that. Other parties are absolutely finding themselves uh, tortured in terms of uh, restriction of uh, uh, democratic rights to campaign, and that should not happen. I believe that in terms of the space, there should be free space for all contesting parties on the public air, the, the, the government controlled media. They should offer that. It's not being offered fairly. And I believe that going forward, uh, in order to nurture democracy, political parties should be funded. I would fund political parties. They should be given eco space. It's about democracy. It's about all of us to give people the choice and a fair choice of choosing who they want, but it should not be on, on an equal playing field. So yes, there's a lot that needs to be done, definitely. You're very confident about um, getting a result this time around. If you don't, um, and we've seen this in other parts of the world, if the leader of the party is unable to steer the party to a good victory, then they often resign. 
what choice will you make after this election? Let's say you get less than 1% of the vote. What's, what, what will that mean for you and your leadership? I'll continue. I, I've just been elected the president of UNI by April. And after my election, launched into this uh, campaign for the presidency of Zambia. If I lose, the presidency isn't the be all and end all of life, not at all. So I continue building the party, this great party, UNI, uh, which is not just a, a party uh, within Zambia, but is an, a, a pan African party and uh, with a great history and legacy. We want to build on what it has always stood for and work at the grassroots, helping the people, uh, relieving the poverty of our people and using all the skills and all the experiences and all the means and resources that we have. We'll continue to build Zambia. It's not just being about a president and being at State House that defines you as a human being. No, no, there are many other things we can do and uh, I'll continue doing that, yes. Bishop Trevor Mwamba, thank you very, very much indeed for joining us. Uh, we wish you the best of luck in the upcoming elections. But for today, thank you so much for, for joining us and sharing your thoughts with us about uh, uh, the elections and the future for your country. Uh, Peter, I thank you so much for having me and God bless you and all the good work you're doing. Thank you very much.